Cesar Chavez, Stokely Carmichael, Heather Booth, Wade Rathke, John Bauman, and Dick Harmon are among the many nationally recognized organizers who either worked with Alinsky or were influenced by his writings and seminars. But Alinsky's work also had serious weaknesses. Having tasted power, some local leaders let themselves become co-opted by political and business interests. Other organizations failed to develop the grassroots leadership necessary for long-term change. And Alinsky failed to build a national network of organizations to amplify the power of local groups. He loved the combat, the bringing people out, and then he'd get kind of bored with it. And as a matter of fact, he was later to say, the, life, the good lifespan of one of these organizations is five years. After that, they either die or they become part of the establishment. So I think a, the great, one of the great steps forward in organizing today has been to put that idea to rest. After Alinsky's death, Ed Chambers assumed the helm of the IAF and built it into a network of more than 50 organizations across the country. The IAF organizers and leaders are trying to create a new political culture in America where ordinary people learn the skills of politics to remake their communities. People don't normally get involved in civic life in our cities. We are trying to teach people to do that. Our walls are down, there are no street signs, we're burned out, we're redlined by banks, education is poor or none at all. We do have some difficulty with law enforcement in terms of stereotypes. And so we have to make decisions about our homeland. My name is Alberta Williams. I'm from St. Barbara's Parish in Bushwick. And I'd like to welcome you all to our EBC Fall Assembly, whose agenda is your vote, a working weapon. Our organizations are the mechanism where people can practice on public life. Let me just draw you a picture of what we were up against when we first started this. You know, the Greeks wouldn't let you practice politics until you were 50 or over. Because you didn't have Sophia, you didn't have political judgment. We are training laymen and women in the art of political judgment. What you have here is a power analysis of what the city's like. These are some of the citizen leaders of East Brooklyn Congregations, EBC. They are among the thousands of people putting Saul Alinsky's ideas into action. I didn't see myself as a leader. What I saw myself is just another person in the community. I came to church every Sunday, um, left an hour later, and that was it. And in the preaching at church, this was a thing that was coming forth to me. You need to be involved in your community. I wasn't politically involved. I'm just a, a family person, a regular guy. But I believe, uh, working with this organization, that we could be heroes too. Normal people, common people that go to work every day, we could be heroes in our communities, and we have to take that role. But taking that role has not been the common experience in America. Our recent political experience has been citizen apathy, low voter turnout, what some political commentators describe as the crisis in American democracy. You cannot go anywhere in America, rich neighborhood, poor neighborhood, in between neighborhoods, and not have a conversation about the failure of politics. This is an almost universal sense that something is deeply wrong in American democracy. But can faith in American democracy be restored? For the Industrial Areas Foundation, the process begins one-on-one. -on -one. People begin, uh, and democracy begins, really, in conversations. People have to realize the only thing you can get something in this country is if you work for it. People sitting in a church basement or around a kitchen table or in a union hall or wherever they choose to gather, 
and talking about their perceptions of public life and this society and what they might do about it if they had power. People do mobilize, but they mobilize around issues that are of importance to them. And once you give them that push, then they get up off their tough and they do what's necessary. The common experience of citizens ought to be the, the starting point for every political debate. We're going to go one-on-one -on -one and talk to people. The first place we're going to start is at home, which is here in the church. But how do ordinary people acquire the skills to become players in the public arena? For IAF leaders, it starts with intensive 10-day training sessions led by seasoned organizers like Arnie Graff. You're organizing around self-interest. If you're not around a multi-issued agenda, you're going to have only those... If you bring in only those people that are interested in education, you'll be an education organization. If you bring in only those people that are interested in housing, you're going to evolve into a housing organization. If the purpose is to build for power, okay, then you, then you need multi-issues because you're going to have multi-interests. I didn't know Alinsky well, but one of the things that Alinsky, he, he did about two or three sessions when I was there before he passed away, and when he talked about this, I'd come out of the civil rights movement, right, and talk about all the actions. He asked me about evaluation. In core, we just didn't do it, you know. The evaluation, where's the next demonstration, right? I mean, that's how I, you know, was taught. And he said, well, you, young man, uh, you were probably just a pile of undigested actions. <laughs> well, what's he talking about? It's not like I need alka or something like that. You know? <laughs> but what he was getting at was, you got, you got to reflect on what you're doing. You've got to reflect on your action, because if you don't reflect on your action, you won't learn. The aim of it is to train and develop people, is to get more people learning and developing, more people to become public players. In the early 1980s, after leaders were trained and relationships developed, EBC wanted to tackle one of the neighborhood's most pressing issues, housing. They set out to build over 2,000 affordable homes called the Nehemiah Plan. But to complete the project, they needed the support of New York's mayor, Ed Koch. They knew how to turn it on and turn it off. You came to a big open meeting, they'd bring in 500 people, they would cheer you, they would boo you, uh, whatever it is uh, to manipulate you, and they would seek to get you committed by putting you on a uh, platform, asking you a question, knowing that uh, you're going to say no, but maybe they might get you to say yes to something that you would normally say no to. I wouldn't do it. City officials and religious leaders gathered for a ceremony on the steps of City Hall today to pledge support for plans to make thousands of houses grow out of the rubble of Brooklyn. But EBC had built more than just homes. They also created a citizen base to challenge City Hall and other powerful institutions. In 1989, EBC launched plans to build another 1,100 Nehemiah homes in the same neighborhood. I didn't apply for the Nehemiah homes the last time. But I'm sorry I didn't. But I did apply this time. And through a lottery system, my number is 465. And I'm hoping that I'm going to be able to get a home because that's what, that's, that's the dream. That's the American dream, to own your own home. Strange, how you doing? Hi, Kyle, and yourself? All right. Who knows your agenda for today? Thank you. You're welcome. That's who we are, okay. EBC's efforts to build the Nehemiah homes are threatened by cuts in Mayor Giuliani's city budget. At this pre-meeting, leaders discuss strategy for a rally to take place the following Sunday. A pre-meeting is when we ask for the key leaders from the congregations to come and meet with us on an agenda. Someone stop in the city? The mayor. That's why I said you'll be our number one enemy if you don't come through for us. We didn't know if we were going to get a meeting or if he was even going to show up. And so you have to start strategizing about what if this happens, what are you going to do? Suppose the mayor can't meet. Then what happens on the 30th? Declare war! We go to war with Mayor Giuliani. Okay. This is a planning session, folks. But we don't know exactly what's going to happen. As of today, things look good. We have the promise of a meeting. But on Sunday, we'll know for sure. Okay. 